Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, love being here with you every week, Casey Haston, executive recruiter, director of recruiting with VIP, and your all around hiring guru. And as usual, you guys know I'm an assessment junkie. We're going to talk a little bit about an assessment today, kind of walk through that, but it's a really unique twist on this assessment and what's going on. So I'd like to welcome Gary Arblaster, founder of Arblaster Consulting and financial visionary who defied adversity to become a trailblazing finance expert. His journey revealed the vital role of dedication to hard work and proper mindset. Mindset, how many times do we talk about mindset? In achieving financial independence. At just 27, Gary earned acclaim as an award-winning producer, excelling in sales leadership for top offices. But his true innovation is the 41 Financial Personality Assessment, a groundbreaking tool linking personality traits to financial choices that helps individuals discover their unique financial personality. Thanks for being with us here today. Casey, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I really I, this am. This is going to be so much fun because we are in my genius zone. I love talking about assessments. And I have to tell you, the, your assessment, and, and I'm an assessment junkie. I don't think I've seen anything like this. No, it's it's unique. There's a lot of assessments out there. They talk about your, your risk tolerance and those types of things. But this truly takes a, a deep dive into your personality and how you make decisions based on that personality. And that's so interesting how you link the two together. Because when I first started taking the assessment, which of course, you know, I have to take the assessment if we're going to talk about it. I was just like, <laughs> how is he going to figure out my financial personality from this? And then we get a little bit deeper on. I'm like, oh, I get it now. It was so, it was fun to take. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to hear that from folks who are getting, getting involved with it, that uh, they're really enjoying it. And then when you get the report, it's a real aha moment. So yeah, it's, I'm excited about it. I really am. I, and just so tell me a little bit about, you know, it, financial wellness doesn't just happen overnight. I've struggled with it my entire life. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you achieve that financial independence and maybe some of the roadblocks you encountered along the way. Well, ironically enough, um, there was a big roadblock and we'll get to that in a minute, but I grew up in a, in a blue collar community and, you know, the conversation in high school necessarily wasn't what school were you going to, what college were you going to, it was more about what job are you going to get? And so that was a conversation in my house and I graduated and I went and got a job. And by the time I was 23 years old, I had 15 different jobs. I was absolutely miserable. And I was broke. And one day I woke up, I said, I'm done. I am, I'm done with this. And it was, I just decided that I was going to follow my dream. And my dream was to be an entrepreneur, but yet specializing in finance. And so I jumped in with both feet. I did go take, get jumped into college. I ended up going to financial seminars. I started reading and studying personal growth uh, specialists like Jim Rome, Brian Tracy, all the, all the big names. And um, I, I, signed up with my first investment firm and in, what was the year it was yeah i was 20 24 years old and by the time i was 27 i was making six figures i was being asked to lead uh, sales meetings in the top one two offices in the country um so it was it was quite the ride i i, I don't know if i was necessarily prepared for it but it was one of those things that you know you, you can't necessarily pause when you're you're in those moments and you have to take the opportunity to run with it so but my hurdle, my hurdle was um, I made a big decision in 2020. Um, so in 1994 is when I started my investment practice, if you will. 2020, I decided to switch companies. And I don't know if you remember what happened in 2000 with the uh, tech bubble and the uh, investment world. It blew up and it crashed. <laughs> and um, the company I left actually owned my assets. So I literally had to basically start from zero. Ugh. 
And when that happened, I could not get anybody to invest any money. Everybody was scared of the investment world. They were scared of the stock market. They were scared of the economy. Then we had Y2K. I mean, that, that was on top of people's minds. Mm. I literally went broke in 18 months. So there I was, you know, making six figures, doing extremely well, saving tons of money. And in 18 months, I found myself broke. And, um, you know, it was one of those situations where I, I, I'll never forget it. I got a phone call from a, a creditor asking for money. And I got off the phone and I literally wiped the contents of my desk onto the floor. And my wife came running into my office and she said, what's the matter? And I said, I can't do this anymore. And that night, uh, it was like yesterday. I remember looking at my kids and my wife in the eye as I sat at that dinner table and I had tears in my eyes and I said, it's, it's got to change. And um, so I had a decision to make that day. And the decision was I could, I could, you know, be bitter about what happened. I can sit and boohoo. I can sit and feel depressed about my situation or I could change it. And I chose to change it. And it's, I haven't looked back since. It took me six and a half years to get out of that hole. Um, but I haven't looked back, um, doing just fine right now. And, uh, I'm living life to the fullest. So, and I think that goes back to one of your primary foundational teachings is that it all has to do with mindset. I know as I was reading over my report, it was mindset, mindset, mindset. So what's, what <laughs> kind of lifestyle and mindset changes did you make to find success twice? Well, you know, I, again, I go back to the fact that I'm a big time, big time personal growth guy. And I, there's a guy by the name of Willie Dolly, Jolly, Dr. Willie Jolly. And he, he always preaches that a setback is a setup for a comeback. And that to me was the kind of the, 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 the biblical principle, if you will, even though it's not biblical or spiritual, um, that I, I ran on. And so it wasn't easy. You know, every day was a battle. It, it, it but, but. You know, the effort I put in is the result I get out. And that's what moved me to do things. And I can I can point back to things now that I did when I was in that financial dip that I would have never, ever experienced if I would not have gone through that challenge. So I look at that challenge, that 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 failure, if you will, as one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life and, and where I am career wise. I, I'm just you know, I've met people all across this world. I'm doing things I would have never, never, ever done if I wanted to went through what I went through. That is so interesting. Um, you know, and I think that I shared a similar experience, not to give too many details, but um, there was a point in my life where there was a separation that occurred. Or let's just call it what it was. It was a divorce and it was mm -hmm. ugly and it left me with so much debt. And I was so distraught about how I was going to get out of all that debt. But you know what? I did it. I plugged away. It took me about six years to get out from under it. But now that I am out from under it, I see it differently. But And I have a question for you, too, because I, I really think words matter. Um, they do. And I think that a lot of times people will look – and you can put any number on this bank account, right? But they'll, they'll look at their bank account and they'll say that's not enough. They have that scarcity m mindset right? Instead of looking at it and going, wow, look how much I got. Let's go do something else. And when I say something else, I mean, maybe just an investment in yourself. So for example, like I just enrolled in another certification. I don't need that, but I want it. And that's, that's an investment right. in me and it will come back to me. So there's a return on investment there. So what are your thoughts on that when people are looking at their bank account and how they perceive it? Well, I, I think we're programmed from a very early age to look at life that way. Um, I'm a firm believer that laziness is taught. It's not something that you're born with. And I also believe that your mindset is something that um, can be steered in the wrong direction pretty quickly if you're not surrounded by the right people. And that's why I surround myself with success, successful people. Um, it's amazing how many people ask financial advice from broke people. <laughs> And um, it, it, it's, it's, and it blows my mind. And so, you know, I've, I've dedicated myself and, and, and it's not that I don't, I don't like people or don't, you know, I want to be, you know, separated. I have, I have some of the best relationships in the world, but I also do surround myself with successful people because I will start to emulate what I see 
in those successful people. They teach me, you know, and I appreciate the fact that you, you know, you, you're signing up for these courses. You are never too young, too old to learn, Yep. you know, and, and I, I sign up for classes all the time. I'm being mentored right now. I, if I could tell you, if I said how much money I've spent on personal growth and mentorship on this program, people may not like it. I just have reinvested dollars back into me yes. and those dollars have returned investment returns all over the place, all over the place. I think that's probably one of the most important investments that you can make is, is to invest in yourself and your continuing yep. education. And I will probably be in school till the day I die, just so you know. Well, that's good. I, I love it. I love And everybody's like, oh, that sounds horrible. And I'm like, oh, I get to take a test, you know? <laughs> um, well, the interesting thing, though, I, I go to these conferences and, you know, this is where I meet some of the most unique and the most successful people in the world. And again, you cannot put a price tag on the lessons that you can learn from somebody like that. I mean, you just, you just can't, you just can't. Absolutely. So I'm really excited to kind of share a little bit more about your 41 financial personality assessment. So first of all, what kind of methodology and research went into developing this assessment? Well, the assessment has been around since 1928. So the, the, the disc disc model, and that's the one we use has been around a long time. Um, it's been developed, it's been tweaked, it's, you know, over the years and, you know, there's been thousands of thousands upon people use it, hundreds upon hundreds of companies have used this just to try to, you know, manage people differently, get to under, understand their staff differently. So, so the assessment itself was um, one that was, you know, it, it's not new. What's unique about this though, is the, the financial piece of it has been 30 years of practice. So I've been in the business since 1994. And one of the things I would pay attention to, and I started to wonder why, is why I would see people with the same type of demographic, if you will. So what does that mean? They make us about the same amount of money. They, you know, their, their, their liabilities are about the same. Their lifestyles are, are relatively the same. But when you look at their, their success rate and their, and their position financially, they're different. They're different. So, you know, it was one of those things I just really started to question why. So about seven years ago, I got into a funk and the funk was not necessarily, you know, I was in this major depression. It was just, I was just, I just didn't feel significant. So I hired a coach and the first thing he did was took me through an assessment. That's the first time I've ever done that. I've never been doing it through an assessment up until about seven, eight years ago. And so was it the disc assessment? It was the disc okay. assessment. So when he, when he asked me to do it, I, I rolled my eyes and I'm like, okay, you know, what kind of voodoo science is this? You know, how in the world are they going to tell me who I am based on answering a few questions? Well, let me tell you some case. I got that report back and I'm like, oh my gosh, this hit me between the eyes. <laughs> like, <laughs> how'd they do this? Um, I was so intrigued by it. I made my entire family take it. And I can tell you right now, it changed the relationship with my wife. Mm. It and, and, and the financial aspects of our relationship changed the relationship with my kids. Um, it really changed the world for me. So I, I sat on for about two years and I said to myself, I'm seeing the results from the DISC assessment play out in everybody's finances. I'm seeing it. So I said to myself, I said, there's, there's got to be, there's got to be an assessment out there that actually kind of goes through this. So I started doing the research and I never really found one other than if you're an aggressive investor, you probably have this type of personality. So I said, darn it, I'm, I'm going to create this thing. So I contacted a couple, a couple organizations that, you know, are, are nationally known for their assessments and, uh, had a few say no, but I had, did have one say yes. And it was personality insights of Dr. Robert Rome. So I called him and he says, we're interested, but here's the catch. You're writing the results. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm the one that actually wrote all the, uh, the results for all 41 different styles on this, uh, on this assessment. So it took me two years, but, um, you, well, you tell me, you took the assessment. Was it accurate? Yes. Very accurate. Yeah. And yeah. by the way, that feels like a little love letter from you now. <laughs> this oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, you, so here's a fun story. So I, when I was thinking about doing this. I, um, I was speaking at a conference and I do a lot of key speaking on this topic and this topic is near and dear to my heart. So if you have any listeners out there who need a keynote speaker, please reach out to me. But I was, I was doing this event. 
So I gave everybody this kind of low description of DISC and, you know, I didn't give them any details of anything. So I asked who related to the four major styles and, you know, I had people raise their hands. So I brought four different people up on stage that aligned with the four major styles. And without asking one financial question, I walked down the row and I told each one how they managed money based on their personality. And it, it literally brought the house down. They're the, like, you know, they're, the, they're standing there in awe. They're shaking their head yes. And when I did that, that was the first time I said to myself, we have something here that needs to happen because we need to start changing the conversation in this country about money because I can give you all the, all the best products and services out there, but if you don't have the mindset and the, might, the right understanding about who you are, your money's still going to be the same. And um, so that's kind of where this all started. Now I have a question. Well, I have so many questions, but the first question I have. All right. So you've seen my report and yes. I know you probably haven't had a ton of time to pour through it, but you probably read these so often. You're probably like, yep. In fact, you said, I'm not surprised when you saw my results. So are you saying that I would not typically view money the way somebody that is a C, which is um, what does the C stand for? Cautious. Cautious. Yeah. I wouldn't, I, I would not necessarily exhibit the same personality towards money that somebody that is a high C would. No, because so, so let's just go through that. Okay. So you scored, do you care if I share what you scored? Not at all. Okay. So you, you scored as a, as an ID and I is inspira inspiring and a D is a, is, is a dominant type style. So that means you're outgoing and you can go people or task oriented, uh, just depending on the day. And, and you scored exactly where I did. I bounced back and forth between people oriented and task oriented. A C personality style is more detail oriented and they're very cautious. So people like you and me will be more worried about number one, our results mm -hmm. and how we perceive things, how we go after things. We'll also be more worried about the, how much we enjoy our money rather than spending time worrying about a budget, spending time worrying about, you know, how safe I can be with my money. Yeah, you know, and I'll use myself as an example. So I hate shopping for cars. I hate it. So as a D personality, my 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 mindset, my personality is to get the deal done so I can be done with this thing I Thank can't you. stand. So what I do is I would go out and I would take the first deal I got if I liked the vehicle just to get it over with. Do you know how much money that's cost me over the years? I probably about the same amount it's cost me. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> until I realized, okay, that my style is not necessarily in the, in the scope of really paying attention to that dollar figure. Another example is that I like to do projects. I like to build stuff. So I'll just go out and I'll buy everything I need and go start the project. I won't do a detailed budget to see where I need to save money. If I, if I find that I need something, I'll run to the store, grab it and leave. I won't spend time checking the prices and going, okay, which one's going to be more cost effective. So until I learned that about myself, my awareness, it just wasn't there. So I would function in that style, in that personality without the awareness behind it. So as an I personality style, they, they really do focus on the fun and the entertainment and the, and the things that they enjoy. So their attitude is I may not be able to afford this right now, but I'm going to go have fun and I'll figure out how to pay for it later. Am I, I try right? not to do that. <laughs> but a lot of, but a lot I have of done that in the past. That. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, you know, this personality assessment takes you to your financial EQ. We really want people to start paying attention to their financial personality awareness, mm -hmm. their financial self-management, their financial social awareness, and their financial re uh, relationship management. And it really, it really can take you to the next level if you do. And I personally think, Casey, on all, I'm just being honest. I think we live in a society today that does not allow us to be who we are. We, we pretend to be somebody we're not. If you look at Facebook, I think I saw a statistic that 23%, 28%, somewhere around there. It's a, it's a very low number of people actually portray themselves as they are. No filter. So I, I think we walk through this life pretending. And I think somebody is 
I, th I think people are literally saying, can I have permission to be who I am? Mm. And, and, and when we do that, it takes down the, the walls and allows people to say, okay, number one, I'm not good at this money thing. I struggle with this money thing. We're not allowed to say that. And, and my goal with this is to allow people to say, look, okay, now I understand. I've got some keys to success I need to pay attention to here because when I get the blinders on, I'm not making good decisions. So that's kind of the that's kind of the angle that I'm running with this assessment because we really do need to change change the the, the conversation about money in this country. You know, and I really think I'm actually working with a local university right now because um, I have a young executive program that I run through one of a bigger organization here, and they we've had a university approach us about that. I run the networking organization, but they really are looking for somebody f to do just this. And if we can catch these kids before they go out in the world and teach them these concepts, I think it could impact a whole generation. Oh, I, I, I agree. So I go down to Liberty University. I've been going down there the last five years and I go in for one week and I teach a class on this. Um, and the kids, it's funny because the, pre the professor actually said, they do exit interviews when they graduate and they said they said that every year this this gets mentioned as one of the most highlights of the course and it's because nobody's talking about it yeah nobody is talking about it and it's funny um i did this for a sports team it was a d1 d1 sports team and i got a call from the coach a week later and he says these kids can't quit talking about this and so they're, what they're doing is though, they're, they're actually analyzing people they see. So when, when I do an assessment and I do training on this assessment, I teach you how to understand other people by number one, their conversations, number two, you know, how they act. You can't hand an assessment to somebody, but what's powerful about this is there's a piece of this that, and we have a, a inter an interactive guide that allows you to understand so if you're married or have a business partner how to actually communicate about money to one another I so we can actually go ahead i was just gonna say i need that <laughs> yeah because you know and i'll use my wife and i as an example all right so i'm a d so i'm out there doing my thing taking the family making decisions rock and roll let's go right results oriented my wife's a c she's That's completely so opposite of me She's completely opposite of me. So she she's cautious. She's detail oriented. So when I'm out there making decisions, what does she do? She starts to ask questions. Okay. What does Gary do? Any idea? Uh, you probably get mad. You're like, why are you asking? Let's just go. You nailed it. I said, why don't you trust me? Mm. And she and until I understood this, it wasn't until then that I realized it had nothing to do with trust. I needed her to have all the information so she could come alongside of me. And it had nothing to do with the money. It had nothing to do with, do with the, uh, the trust factor, it had nothing to do with how she felt about me. We all make decisions based on one or two things, either to fill an inner need or to protect us from the things we fear most. And if you think about that and how we manage money, that's exactly how we manage money. Mm, that is so good. And I find it interesting that your wife is the same as my boyfriend. <laughs> and so when you said, and she's a scene, I'm like, yes, I'm going to get some insight here. You know, that's really funny. That's really funny. And yeah. I also find like, so we bought a camper a few years ago. Number one, coming to the decision to buy a camper took about a year. We're going to buy a mm. camper. Buying the camper took another year. Yep. Not because of, and here's the funny thing. We ended Can up I tell you why? To the same camper that we looked at the year before. The same Can one. I tell you why? Yeah. Can please. I tell you? Well, your C personality boyfriend never felt he had enough information to make the decision. That's true. After looking at hundreds and hundreds of campers, though, we finally went yep. back to the first one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and C personality struggle uh, types do struggle with that, that, you know, they're, they're very detail oriented and sometimes when the things they don't understand can really create a roadblock for them to make a decision. And so they, in order for them to be comfortable with making a decision because they're cautious, they're going to need more and more and more and more details. And I've seen oftentimes that financial opportunities just went away 
because they never could pull the trigger because they didn't trust it or if they didn't didn't have enough information. And you know, opportunities don't go away, they just go to somebody else. So understanding right. understanding that style to say, look, this is not an exact science, money's not an exact science. There are gonna be times you're gonna have to take a step of faith, irregardless, that's not a word, regardless of your personality style. <laughs> Um, it's hard. It's hard. So it, it's it's helping walk people through that stuff is it's very important. Oh, okay. I have another question. Imagine that. Um, so when I look at my assessment, I mm -hmm. I'm a very high I and a very high D, very low, mm -hmm. low, low, low C, and somewhat low S. Is there something I should be watching out for when it comes to my money, my financial personality, since I am so. I feel like I'm extreme on the ID side. Yeah, you're going to want to be careful that you don't take too much risk and not understand the risk you're taking. Mm. Oftentimes, um, when our personality styles, they, they, they do come into the, the how we spend money mm -hmm. and they come into how we invest money. So you'd be more apt um, to spend money on things, uh, number one, you enjoy, but also number two, you don't like money sitting around being idle. So you're going to want your money to work for you. So you're going to do you're going to do things with your money that's going to, in your mind, be working for you. Um, sometimes you just got to be careful of that because those not, are not always the best practices with money. Interesting. Yeah, it's like you know me. Are you looking at my bank account? <laughs> <laughs> nope. But I do know personalities, and and this is this is Casey. This is why I truly believe this is revolutionary. And it's going to be different for people to really start making change. I believe if you understand these concepts, it can change literally your finances overnight. So, and I know that financial independence requires a lot of discipline and forming habits that encourage consistent, responsible decision making. So what are, if you had to give somebody just like three bullet points, what are some simple and fast practices that they can do early on? Because I know that when, you know, when we worry about money, that affects our career, right? We might yep. make different decisions worrying about money. So what are some three things that people can do so they don't have to worry about money? Well, number one, you need to take responsibility for your money. So, and here's an example. So there was a point in time when somebody handed you the keys to your finances. So what do I mean by that? Either your mom and dad, your guardians, whoever it was, was taking care of you up until a certain period of time. Then they took the keys to the finances that you have and they gave them to you. It was that point that you started making decisions on your money. So all the decisions that you've made from your that standpoint of time to now is the reason why your finances are the way they are. Now, I'm not saying that circumstances doesn't come into play here because it does. But a lot of times our response to circumstances also plays a huge role in how we get to where we are financially. So number one is take responsibility for your money. Number two, I think you need to accept who you are. Okay. And I'll come back to that. And it's not because of the assessment I've seen time and time again, people want to continuously make excuses for that. So if you struggle with money, I'm standing here today saying it's okay. Not everybody is, 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 is exceptional at managing money. So get help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I always tell people, look, don't focus on your weaknesses, focus on your strengths and hire out your weaknesses. It will help you move forward and actually fill in the, the, the gaps, if you will, of where you struggle. And I think last but not least is, is, you know, don't procrastinate. And I see this all the time. Time is our biggest adversary. Did you get that? Time is our biggest adversary. Don't procrastinate. I don't care how old you are. Start today. Uh, my kids always laugh at me because I, I have a saying it's, it, <laughs> it's long and it's kind of quirky, but it's, it's today's the day that tomorrow relies on for a start of a new beginning. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that if you keep delaying day after day after day, it just pushes it down the road. And I'll tell you what, I've seen people who've started and what they get on the other side of it, they're like, why didn't I start this sooner? It doesn't take much. So I'd say those are the top three for me. I think those are very, very good. And just, you know, to let people know, like you said, things do happen. Life happens. But, yeah. you know, and I had to completely start over with everything. 
after my divorce. And so, and that wasn't that long ago, but you can do it and I'm doing pretty good now. So it's just, you've just got to do what you said. You got to take that first step and you got to get started. I think that's so important. Um, okay. Are you ready for a VIP question? Uh oh, I think I am. I don't know. We'll see. I was getting nervous about these. Type of I'm just going to ask you one today. So let me think about which one. I think I'm going to do the fun one. The, the, just to see how you'll answer since we're talking about personalities. So if you were chosen to be one of the first colonists on Mars, what three things or people would you take with you? Oh, wow. Um, I think I would choose, well, I, I'm not going to put names to this, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the types of people. I would take an, a, a wise and optimistic person. I would take somebody who is creative and I think I would take somebody that I would want to build an intimate relationship with. I think that's very fair. How do people get in touch with you? How do they find your book? Well, you can go to my website, uh, rblasterconsulting.com and uh, all my contact information is in there. Uh, you can actually go to that website and you can take an assessment. There's a couple different types of assessments on there as far as the reports are concerned. I also have a ebook that people can download. It's the 10 tips to find or gain a financial edge. Mm. Uh, that's it. So it's, it's available as well. And my book is on that website. And I'd love to connect with anybody who's interested in hearing more about this. Or like I said, if somebody needs a keynote on this topic, I love to run my mouth about this subject. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pretty active on LinkedIn? I am. Yeah, I do okay. a post every week. Um, I have a newsletter you can sign up for on my website as well that uh, sends out financial week, uh, information every week. Awesome. I know that's where a lot of our audience hangs out, being business-minded people and career-focused. Yep. So I want to make sure they can reach you there. Well, this has been amazing. I have loved this conversation. Thank you so much for going through this assessment with me. And, you know, one other thing I want to say about the assessment that I thought was really interesting is that I took this assessment like 25 years ago and my results are the same today. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting to me. Yep. So Absolutely. All right. Well, I just have one last thing to say to you. You are a VIP. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And that's a wrap for today. Join us next week here on the We Are VIP podcast. We'd love to know how we can help you be a VIP. To find out more, log on to wearevip.com.